welcome. Um, again, I'm glad to be up here. Of course, how do you follow? How do you follow Robert? You know, but you know what? I, I'm not Robert. That's right. That's right. You're right. You know what? I, <laughs> I'm not. You know, I'm not Robert. In this realm of appearances, yes, we know that there is no I, but yet we're dealing with these realm of appearances, and in the realm of appearances, there's there is separation, and there is a you, and there is a me. And there was Robert, and Robert came up and talked the way that only Robert can talk. Right. And I'm sitting up here and talk the way that I talk. That's um, we spend so much time, the phantom man, trying to be like somebody else. Yeah. I mean, and that's what he spends his life doing, is trying to be like somebody else. Like, oh, this person does such a good job. I wish I could be like that person. Well, guess what? You can't. You can't, no matter how much, <laughs> no matter how much, how much you train the phantom man, you can't become. Ah, <laughs> oh, Robert's pretty cute. We'll give him. He's pretty cute. But, you know, if the phantom man loves to compare himself to others, and you can't, you can't, you can't compare yourself. So, I got a lot of requests last night that's. People wanted me to read my poem again. Yeah. And so I was going to read it this morning again because they wanted me to read it. Because I have another one that I kind of changed the ending that's just for Mike at the end of today. But this morning they said, oh, would you read that poem to me? Because I truly believe poems really can get in there. Mm -hmm. And they kind of bypass this because there's that creative part. And it's, mm -hmm. it's the heart that's speaking to the heart. And sometimes... You know, you can try to think a poem, but it just really just just meets you where you're at and grabs you. And you don't even understand why. And I think that's a wonderful thing about poetry. So I'm going to read the poem again. And then all, all I'm going to basically do is just kind of recap. You know, he was saying, you know, he just tells it because he doesn't know anything. And the only thing I can share with you is, you know, what has become known to me. I think a lot of times as, as when you get up and you want to talk to people, everybody wants, okay, well, what else are you going to say? What else is the new big thing? Well, there isn't. All I got is this. And in working in education for as long as I did, one of the things that I really understood is that, you know what, you can't hear something just once. Yeah. When you're a teacher, sometimes there's a principle you teach for nine months and teach that same thing over and over and over and over again, and you never leave it. And those, but by the time those kids are done, it might finally click. So all I'm going to go over is just what I know and what we went over yesterday, just kind of a recap, because that's, that's all I know. That's what is what... Maybe you'll sleep with me. So I'm going to go, just I'm going to... Do this poem real quick. There is no such thing as passing time, no future to lay a hold of and make it mine. Remembrances of a past held hostage by the blind. The passing of time is a concept of the mind. The phantom constantly lives by the hands of the clock, controlled by the sound of each tick-tock. A future to look forward to or a past to exalt. A second chance at redemption to erase past faults. In the land of passing time there can be no rest, only struggling and toiling to always be the best. Time commands the individual who worship, worships separation. It's mind-solving problems in complete desperation. The phantom plants the thoughts of anxiousness and worry. Time advances the appearances and fear rushes in with the fury. A belief in separation that there's a me this is happening to. False judgment rules and reigns declaring it to be true. Time disappears when the phantom is gone. Away goes the thoughts that made death seem so strong. Peace 
only comes when each second quits its chase, spontaneous life exploding, putting an end to the rat race. Life knows not a concept of a season or an age, no events captured in pictures or history written on a page. Life has no beginning and it will never have an end, no appearances to control, nor future to apprehend. So that's all about the Phantom Man and how we think we really are. Um, over the last couple of days, the Phantom Man has, um, well, first of all, we've kind of learned what the Phantom Man is. It's this image that we have of ourselves. It's the person that we think we are. It's these words that have spoken, spoken over us from the time that we're little. I mean, we speak words. I did it with my kids, you know. I would, if you see them do something bad, oh, you're a bad boy, or don't ever do that because you'll become this or you'll become that. We speak those, and those actually become ingrained to us, and we become, that's who we think we are. You know, we think we're this person with this like and this dislike. Oh, you don't like this because such and such. Oh, I grew up, I grew up hating vegetables, squash and zucchini. You, I kept told, you will not like those. Those things aren't good. You will not like those. So I grew up, I did not like zucchini and squash. And finally, I just remember, you know, different, eating different things and people would say, zucchini and squash are in these. And I'm like, what? Then I realized, I do like zucchini and squash. But all my life, I thought, oh, I'm a person. I don't like zucchini and squash. That's just who I am. I don't like them. No, that's not true. But I had grown up because all those things were spo you know, spoken over me. Um, you know, as Mike said, each day we start out a day with a lie. We jump up, we look in the mirror, and there's us. And that's who we think we are. And we spend the rest of the fragments of time singing, well, this is us, and what do I need to do in this, in this fragment of time? I mean, you know, with Robert was, was, was speaking, it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, what, are, what am I going to do with my fragment of time? It's just like, I got to get out of that. doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with me. But yet, we, the phantom man has those thoughts of trying to be someone else. How many of you woke up today? What if? Or, you know, if I only had this. Um, on Friday night, we learned that the phantom thinks his poop don't stink. Well, sometimes the phantom doesn't even think he poops at all. <laughs> mm. That's the truth. Is sometimes that phantom doesn't think he poops at all. He defends himself all the time because he thinks he is deserving of all that is good and nothing of evil. He constantly judges himself against others. And his judgment, as Mike had said, is always a hair better than someone else. I mean, we do it all the time. I mean, especially in my job, too, when I have to send somebody else, you know, there's a lot of judgment going on. Yeah. You know, I'll go, I can't send him to that because he did this, and I don't understand why he did this. If he only hadn't have done this, I could have sent him over here. But you know what? It's still judgment. I'm still judging him based on, on what he did. Um, the phantom always needs to be exalted always needs to be praised. Phantom Man always needs to be praised. Who's that sound like? Sounds like God. God always has to be praised. God always has to be worshipped. Always has to be honored for his value and his worth. That's a Phantom Man. Phantom Man's always got to be praised, always got to be honored. I mean, we all want people to like us. We all want people to honor us. And like, when we do something, we want to thank you. And then we kind of get mad. Now, I remember I wrote, I did something for somebody. I told my husband, you know, I didn't even get a thank you note. Yeah. Who was that? That was the Phantom Man. 
you know, that was definitely the Phantom Man. The Phantom says, you know, even when they hear stuff like this. Oh, I know all that. I absolutely know it. You know, I don't need to learn anything. Yes, I know. Oh, I've heard it. Yes, I believe that. You know, that's what's, what's so wonderful about Robert. I don't know what I believe. He's not saying, I believe, I believe all of it. Yes, I totally agree with it and can spout off the thing with oneness. And then something happens and poof, the beliefs go up in a cloud of smoke. And then they're starting to pray to God, who they're really praying to the phantom man, which is themselves, to change the circumstances. The phantom man constantly complains. He constantly wants change. He wants the appearances to line up with what his judgment of good and evil should be. And it's because of this change that he's suffering every day. Every day he wakes up and every day he suffers. What do you think suffering is? A lot of us have different, if I say suffering, everybody has a different idea of what suffering is. You know? It's, it's just what's not, as, he, as Robert said, it's for joy. It's, it's just you're not in joy. It's no joy. It's no peace. That's what suffering is. It's, you know, it's not getting on top of a cross, having nails put in your thing, and, or you know, physical suffering or all that. It's not. It's just you don't have joy. There are people that can have great joy in the midst of having a body ailment. They don't even know sometimes they have this bodily ailment. So it's not that. It's the, it's the lack of peace and it's the lack of joy. Why does Phantom Man want change? I mean, really, why does he want change? Because he wants to be God. He wants to control. He wants to get in there and change and move all the puzzle pieces the way that he thinks it should, he should be. And he goes about living his life, sweating and toiling to make those changes come about. Because that's what we think our life is. I have a lifetime. I've got, I've got 75, 80 years, and I've got to make it the best that I can be. So I've got to get the right house. I've got to get the right car. I've got to get all this and spends all this time. And why do you need that? Because you have to look better than someone else. You have to be a hair better. Or at least as good. Or at least as good as that. Well, no, you don't even want to settle. If, let's be honest of being just as good. You want to get that one edge over just to be better than, than somebody else. Because then the phantom man, then you get to be praised. You get to be worshipped. Look what I accomplished. The God of this world gets that appraise and accomplishment. We do it all the time with our celebrities. Yeah. All the time. And then, and then we get mad at them because they don't live up to what we think we get mad at them. Well, you're the one that's built them up that way in the first place. Yeah. You just get mad at yourself because you're not there. So it's just the vicious, vicious circle of the hamster wheel. We talked about that hamster wheel. But that phantom man is on that hamster wheel. And he's sitting there and trying to make that wheel go round and round and round and round and round. And the louder he goes, the louder, the louder that wheel is. But then when that phantom, that, you know, that hamster stops, that wheel gets silent and silent. And that silence is what is heard and not that hamster wheel. And that's how the phantom man is. He's, he's on that hamster wheel. We talked about how the phantom man was sneaky. He'll eat your lunch if you let him. Um, you know, I told you the story of, of the retreat, how before I came to this retreat, I was just constantly bombarded of, of decisions that I had to make. And, and I sat down and I said, I'm in hell. Well, first of all, it was, it was good that I sat down and I realized, hey, I'm in hell. But that's where the phantom man was really sneaky. He didn't mind that I sat down and said I was in hell. Because it, it kept that perpetual lie still there. When I said I'm in hell and I don't know how I got here, it kept that lie. 
that, that there was an I that didn't believe the fact that there was an I mm -hmm. who was in hell. So even though I knew the fact that there was no I, here's the hamster wheel, the fact that I knew there was no I still kept me in separation. It's that what I talked about before. Oh, I know this. Okay, well, yeah, I knew there was no I, but the fact that I knew there was no I was still, was still the same, still the underlying, still the same thing, but it was all cloaked. And so that's why, you know, as long as, as, as that phantom man, he's always going, he's always going to be there, especially in this realm, always. It's just learning not to listen to him. Can't get rid of him. Can't get rid of him. You can just shut him up. Or the silence becomes louder for you to be able to hear what life has to say. Which is that what that life really is. You know, we talked about how many of you to last night looked in the mirror and said, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> At first you went, okay, should I really be saying this? This is kind of, you know, kind of felt a little weird that you, that you can say, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. But that's who we are. That's our identity. You know, we're always going to have one foot to wear we have this body, and we're going to see him. We're going to have to look into a mirror. And, you know, Robert's got to comb his hair, and he's got to comb the back of his head. You know, so he's all, we're always going to have that. But when we look in the mirror knowing it's not that, it's not what I'm seeing, it's this truth, but getting that truth so speaking so loud rather than this reflection. I mean, that's we got to get to a point is that the truth is speaking louder than the reflection. I always say, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. That's what I am. And really say it like you mean it. I'm the truth. I'm the way. I'm the life. And realize that it's not the most blasphemous thing to say. It's the most humblest thing to say. Now, the phantom man says humbleness is tearing himself down. But he really doesn't tear himself down. He just says, oh, that's not who I am. But then he goes around and tries to prove that's really who he is. Yeah. Okay, like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, somebody says, you are so kind and you are so gentle. Oh, thank you. And then he goes around trying to do things that are so kind and gentle to prove that he's kind and gentle. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he's really still trying to exalt himself. Where when you say you're the truth, the life, and the way, and look at it as really mean it, that's really humble. You're not having some false identity. You're saying, I'm the truth. I'm the way. I'm the life. That's all there is. There isn't anything else. And until the big thing, a big thing that really hit me, that really helped me, is that I was never, ever going to see anyone else that same way. Oh, I could tell you I love you. I could tell, yep, we're one. I could tell you all that. But until I knew I was the truth, the way, and the life, that's who I am. Apart from any of this, that is the only thing there is. That is who I am. I could not sit across the dinner table and look at my husband and see him the exact same way. I would see everything else. I would see the way he cho you know, chewed his food. I would see the way, you know, all the little things that <coughs> got me upset. Okay, until I could see myself. I was always going to see him. Always going to see anybody that way. But I could look in your face and tell you, oh, yes, we're one. Yes, you're the same as me. We're the exact. But really, really look at them to the point where everything else disappeared. Not going to happen until I believe that about myself. So you got to be honest with yourself and realize that. Because that's why it always says it starts here. It starts with with this, because unless I see myself that way, I don't care. It's not gonna. It, I'm not gonna see anybody else that way. We talked about how the appearance realm is not the truth. 
the hardest thing is to look around you and say, this is not truth. Now, I didn't say that it's not necessarily real. It's not truth. Thank goodness this thing is real because my butt's sitting on it, okay? And if it wasn't real, who knows where I'd be? But it's not truth. It's real in this appearance realm, but there's a big difference between what is out here is real and what truth is. And truth is all there is. Now again, this isn't something your mind's going to understand. It's not going to understand because it's only going to understand what it sees, what it feels, what it touches, you know, what it tastes. It's only going to know the five physical senses. Your phantom man cannot know anything else. So you can't teach it spiritual truths. No matter how hard you die, you can't teach your phantom man spiritual truths. We might come up with a formula that the phantom man might try to say, okay, well, if you say this three times, you know, it could come into this natural realm. It'll come from the spiritual into the natural. That's just a formula. It's not truth. Truth never changes. Truth doesn't need to change. What we've got to see is that this realm is not truth. Let's, let's quit living by this corporeal world and start living by the incorporeal world which is where life, which is what you are, is. In this realm, there's a you and there's a me, and there are opposites. There's black, there's white, there's rich, there's poor. There's sickness, there's health. And like I said, we try to mix the two realms, and it's not going to happen. Everything in this realm is a projection of what life truly is. And it's being projected out from that lens that the phantom man sees things with. Okay, he sees it through this lens of separation. Okay. You can't change his lens. Okay, his lens is his lens. Yeah. And he sees through this lens of separation. And that's in this realm, it's always going to be like that. Somebody said, well, even in this, even, it's hard to talk about because in this realm, there's a you and there's a me. Yes. And in this realm, there's always going to be that separation. So you, you say you and me, but there's a difference between, okay, we're talking about this realm, but allowing that lens to control and to be, what do I want to say, to, to be what rules everything and, and, and that you see everything by and think that this is life. There's a big difference, a real big difference. Basically, what we need to do, I don't even like to say what we need to do. I don't even like that. Um, what I've found that when I experience what life truly is, it's because I've quit listening and looking at the projection screen. That's what I found. That the, It's during that time that I can just shut everything and not answer it. I had all these decisions to make and everything was yapping and yapping and yapping and yapping at me and yapping at me constantly. And I am very, I, you know, in the natural I have to make decisions. I do capable to make decisions. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But I don't, I don't want, I want to be, go beyond that. I don't want to live by this realm. I want to experience, do I believe that we can experience um, this incorporeal word and, and, and walk and experience all that? Yes, I do, and I want to. And I'm not sure, I can't sit up here and tell you exactly what that's going to be like. I don't know, and I don't have, I can't tell you how to do that. I wish I could because I think we're all getting to that point that it's like little steps, but I want to. And I believe in a can. Um, 
So this started yapping at me and just started talking to me. And, and finally, I just did I, nothing. I did nothing. This thing started yapping. You've got to do this. If you don't do this, all hell's going to break loose. If you don't do this, you know, it's going to be bad for the company. If you don't do this, it's going to be bad for this. It's, it's going to. It's going to. It's going to. Or well, First of all, where is it getting me to look? It's getting me to look in the future. It's getting me to say, this could happen. You don't know what's going to happen. But it's all these things, if you don't do, this is going to happen. So it's constantly speaking to me, constantly talking, constantly talking. So I just sat there. I didn't answer it. It didn't shut up. It got louder. And my whole insides basically felt like I was going to die. It literally felt like I was going to die. You know how you get anxious and you get worried and you get, and it was all there. And I just sat there and I'm like, I'm not going to do anything. No, no. Nope. So those thoughts would come in my head. I just didn't take them. I'm like, nope. You know, even Jesus said, take no thought. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not even taking the thought. Thought's going to speak. I'm not going to listen. My body's talking to me. I mean, it broke out in hives. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of it was just talk, just speaking. So I'm, like, I'm not going to listen. I'm not, I'm not going to listen. Kind of sat there. wasn't going to do anything. I, there was so much inside of me wanted to do. I, I, oh God, that phantom man wanted to get in there, and I can clear this all up in no time. It's like no, I'm not going to do anything. Just kept yapping, kept yapping, kept yapping. A couple weeks. Like I said, it was literal hell. But one thing I started noticing is that. Start, it's still yapping, but silence was there. And silence started to get louder. And things still yapping, but silence started to get louder and louder and louder. And all of a sudden, things started to calm down. I didn't do a thing didn't change anything, didn't make any, you know, any rash decisions, just, but it's still speaking. But this, this, this silence got loud, small, uh, louder and louder. And that's when you kind of can hear life broadcast. Um, but it's not words. It was a broadcast of peace and a broadcast of joy that this mind could not even understand. And I found myself doing something that I didn't even know that I was doing. Next thing I know, I, I, I had done some things and somebody goes, why did you do that? And I'm like, do what? <laughs> and I said, well, you did this. And I'm like, oh, I did. Because it totally bypassed this. There wasn't this me that got in there and started doing it. And everything, now is everything perfect, you know, perfect in this natural realm? No, but I didn't even start then looking. I wasn't even aware of what was even going around out here. But there was peace and there were things that happened the way. I was just like, so that's, that's it. Boy, I would love to say I do that all the time. If I do it four times a year, I'm happy. <laughs> but I, I know I've experienced that. And you know, we don't know anything beyond our experience. We really don't. So that's why I know that there is that, that incorporeal world, that, that world that is life, that is just this life, this peace, this joy, the totally has nothing to do with this phantom man and his realm of appearances. You know, it's one of the things that really helped me is to learn that in this realm, you know what, is, is passing time, but things just don't happen. In this realm they do, but in life they don't. That was great for me to realize. In life, 
things don't happen. There's no need for them to happen. Happen means they never were to begin with, so they now happened. How can life that is everything just happen or just become? It always has been, always is. It is. Because I used to be one of those that walks around, and eh, shit happens. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, well, it might, but life does not. Life does not just happen. Life is. I used to believe in the concept that I had talked about that there used to be a me and an individual spirit. Um, I, uh, truth has always been a real big with me, real big. I have always wanted to know truth. Um, always because when I was a little kid, I always felt I was being lied to, you know, by my parents, by my grandma. Always just like, they're not telling me the truth. I want to know truth. You know? So. I spent a lot of time in this natural realm as the phantom man searching for different ways for truth. Um, it was when I was pregnant with my second son who was, uh, I was seven months pregnant with him and my first son went into the hospital. He uh, had a very, very uh, minor um, I don't even call it an ailment, but it's very common among little boys. It's called hypospadias. And the whole of the penis is on the side instead of the top. So it's a very simple operation for the doctor to go and fix it. It's like a two hour surgery, same day surgery, in, out. So I was seven months pregnant. I figure I want to potty train Nick. Now's the best time to have it done. So we took him into the hospital, sitting in the waiting room, waiting. The doctor said, eh, it shouldn't even be more than two hours. Okay. So we're waiting. It's two hours. It hadn't heard anything. Three hours, it hadn't heard anything. Four hours, hadn't heard anything. Finally, the doctor comes out, kind of looks at us and says, well, we've had a problem and we are going to send him to Children's Memorial Hospital. I'm like, okay, what's the problem? Oh, we don't know yet. He's just not coming out of anesthesia. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I'm seven months pregnant at the time. I'm thinking, all right, they're going, we're gonna transfer him by helicopter to Children's. Okay. So. I'm getting my stuff. I call my doctor. Hey, can I get in a helicopter? And they're like, why? He says, oh, they want to transfer my son to Children's. I, I, I guess he's not coming out of anesthesia, but it's all going to be okay. Can I get in the helicopter? And she's like, no, you're seven months pregnant. You cannot get in the helicopter. I'm like, okay. So we had to drive from where we had the surgery done to Children's Memorial. It's like a two-hour drive. So those two hours, you talk about my phantom man just going crazy. All kinds of projection into the future, not knowing what, to, you know, what's going on, what I'm going to do. I mean, it, it, it was hell. So I got there, and by that time he had been flown there. The doctors look, had taken a look at him, and they, um, they called us into the office, and they said, well, we really don't know how to tell you this, but they said, um, we're we did our neurological exam and we did find out what happened and as doctors they were all upset what had happened. They said uh, the, there was a kink in the oxygen tube and the anesthesiologist did not catch it in time. And so he has lost all this oxygen to his brain. He is seizing right now but we have him sedated but seizing, we don't know if he's brain dead, we don't know if he's going to be a vegetable, we don't know what's going to happen to him. We just have to wait and see. So I had just became a new Christian at this time. 
so my natural thing was to go and to pray. So I prayed, and um, for five days they they kept doing their testing and testing, and finally they came to us and said, you know, we have to, we have to pull, you know, we want to know if you want to donate his organs because we have to take him off life support because he has absolutely no uh, brain activity whatsoever. So we want to know if you want to donate his organs. Well, I'm kind of looking going, okay, well, this isn't how this is supposed to end up. You know, I just prayed. You know, I'm just learning all about healing. And, and, and so I was like, what? This isn't how this is supposed to be. So I remember going with um, my husband, and we, uh, he's like, well, what do we do? What, what do we donate? And I'm like, well, I don't know if I'm ready to give up yet. And it was this peace that came over me that I couldn't even, couldn't even begin to understand. But the only thing I heard was just let it go. Let it go. Well, from what I had been learning with religion, what do you mean let it go? I'm not going to let it go. I'm going to dig my heels in and I'm going to stand and I'm going to do. I just kept saying let it go. So, all right. So we went back. We donated his organs. Um, but I remember going into a closet after the funeral because we had a Catholic funeral. My husband was Catholic at the time. We had a Catholic funeral. And, you know, of course, then you get, oh, God just wanted another little angel. And you hear all those things, and I'm just like, I do, I, I don't want to hear this. What do you mean God just wants? How can I really get close to a God when here's a God that's given me this wonderful child, and he's going to take this child away from me that's an Indian giver? I'm like, I don't want to have anything to do with this God. Yeah. So I went into a closet and said, all I want to know is truth. That's all I want. All I want to know is the truth. So I proceeded to go after truth. And of course, you know, I went through my charismatic things and I went through my name it and claim it phase and I went through, you know, all those different phases. Uh, but there was something in me. You know, we all have that, well, at least there's life after death. You know, I'll get to see him again. That thing kind of just, oh, I'll get to see him again. There's life after death. Then I remember I started reading some things with, about Gary Sigler and started reading those. And I started to just dive into going, it's not what I've thought it is all this time. I just, I know it's not. I just know that I know. I want to know what this truth is. I just, I want to know truth. And I know that truth is not what I'm seeing. It's not what people are seeing. I even know I'm not what I am. But I just knew this. I know I'm not that, but what the hell am I? You know, what the hell? You know, and you get to that, what's my purpose? I got to have a purpose. What's my purpose? I want a purpose. Is it to, you know, tell other people that, you know, there is life after death? Is there a purpose here that, you know, to tell, um, which I do, which I told Robert last night, is always interview the anesthesiologist. If you ever, you know, before you ever go into surgery, it's the anesthesiologist that you should be interviewing, not necessarily so much the doctor. But I was thinking, is that my purpose? What's my purpose? I've got to have a purpose. Because my phantom man thought, there's got to be some reason why you're here. Because that's what I lived out of. I lived out of this phantom man, and I've got to make this phantom man be the best that he can be. And there's got to be some reason why I'm here. And, you know, this phantom man has got to be in honor of, you know, my son's life. And there's just something I've, I've got to do with my purpose. And I started listening to Mike. And the things that started becoming a truth to me was being confirmed because at first I thought oh my gosh I'm going off the deep end you know what the death of my son that's it they're gonna lock me up in the loony den because yeah. some of the things that I was I was getting in second I couldn't share I had absolutely no one that I could share this with yeah. because sometimes you can't because you want to share with people you really do and and that wife knows that really, it's just life you're sharing. It's the same thing. But the phantom man goes and says, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's Connie. And Connie's going to think you're alone. 
can't do that. So I had no one to share any of this with. But yet, there was something inside that I just knew. I just knew it. I don't care. You know, finally, you have to get to a point where you tell that phantom man, like he said, I don't care. What? Sometimes you have to tell that phantom man, I don't care. Oh. I don't care. I don't care what anybody thinks. You know, I just want, I just, I just wanted to know what truth is. That's all I wanted to know. So I started getting some things and I started listening to Mike and it's like, oh my gosh, they're, they're becoming, someone else is, is, is talking about the same things that I'm talking about and that I'm coming to know. And, and, and what it taught me is don't be afraid to share life with life just because the phantom man says no they're going to think you're crazy they're not going to think you're crazy no no because what life has to say knows what life needs to hear um The mind's never going to understand that there's nothing to do. Can you stop this for a second? I'm sorry. So I'm excited that's going to laugh on. But I want to make sure if they're listening, they're going to be hollering out for that. <laughs> All right. Um, the mind will never understand that there's nothing to do or that there is no purpose. Um, I was here searching for a purpose, and there's no purpose. Life does not need a purpose. See, a purpose needs to be fulfilled. The phantom man needs a purpose because the phantom man needs to be exalted. But life needs no purpose. The real, the real us, who I really am, doesn't need a purpose. I doesn't need to be fulfilled. Right. It's just that phantom man. Life is not in a journey. Doesn't need to get anywhere. My phantom man needed to be on a journey. Some people might say, oh, but through all that, you evolved. <laughs> no, my phantom man is still my phantom man. You can't, you know one thing you got to learn? And one, this is one thing that really happens. You know what? You can't clean up the phantom man. You can't wash him up. You can't get him to believe the right things no matter how hard you try. Okay? I remember, you know, I used to, you know, I, I need to be more kind. I used to think, I need to be more kind. I used to, I need to be more nice. I mean, everyone thought I was nice, but to me, I didn't think I was nice enough. Because I would look at people and I would talk with people and think, oh my gosh, I want to be just like them. Oh my gosh, you can just see the kindness ooze out of them. Why can't I be like that? I want to be like that. So I would go on these self-help books, you know, that tells you, well, you just need to do this. And you just need to do this. And I would look, and all it is is washing up, you know, making the phantom man clean and, and letting the phantom man say, okay, well, you know, try to do this to be more kind. And the phantom man will go with that because you know why? Then he gets to be praised. They thought, I, I, I did this for him and I did that for him, and oh, look, at they gave me a thank you note. They really do like me. I like Sally Fields. <gasps> they like me. They really, really like Sally me. Fields. Yeah. You know, because that's what the phantom man wants. Yeah. So I would spend, you know, all this money on self-help books. Yeah. 
to try to become. As we learned yesterday, you can't become. Life doesn't become anything when it is everything. But it's the phantom man that wants to spend all that time becoming. And he wants to become because he wants to be praised. And he wants to continue to sit on that throne of God. The first thing we got to see is the phantom man is not our friend. We can't coddle him. We can't dress him up in pretty clothes and buy him gold jewelry and, you know, all these other things. You can't. You know, he's a killer when you see it. The phantom man's a killer. He's a pe he kills the peace and the joy of who you really are. And he snuffs it out so that it's not enjoyed. You can't retrain your mind. You can't retrain the phantom man. You can't teach him new tricks. Again, those self-help books are there to teach the phantom man new tricks, and you can't, you can't teach him new tricks. Because we try. Why do you think all these people go to the, you know, a lot of the movie stars go to rehab, but then they always end up back. But they've tried to train their mind that they don't need all those things. But yet, they always go back because you can't train the phantom man. You can't do it. One of the things the phantom man is greatly feared of is death. He doesn't want to die because he doesn't want to end. And death is anything of what it thinks it is. There's all kinds of different, there's not just physical death, there's emotional death. There's all kinds of death. You know, when Nick crossed over, it was an emotional kind of death because there was that grief. But you know, that grief was for the phantom, the phantom man was grieving because what did it kept telling me? Oh, you're going to miss out on graduations. Oh. And you're going to miss out on weddings. And you're going to miss out on all these things that the phantom man wanted to be a part of in the future. In the future. Yeah. 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 You know, so the phantom man just kept that kept that alive. And he crucifies the truth that what we really are is life and there is no birth in that and there's no death in that. What we truly are are birthless and deathless. You're not born. These bodies become a projection out in this through birth but you're not born. The truth of what you really are is not born. You're not born. And you don't die. That's why Mike always used to say these things. Bullets can't kill ya. I remember this saying that. Bullets can't kill ya. Remember that? Remember saying those? Bullets can't kill ya. Well, I can't. Not who you really are. But the phantom tries to crucify this truth in order to live in this death realm of appearances. The hardest thing to do is let go. Jesus said you got to leave your world, which means you got to leave looking at the appearances. And you have to stop judging the appearances. And we have to stop worrying about tomorrow because tomorrow never comes. So we have to leave this world. But you got to know when you start that, when you're like, I'm going to leave this world, phantom man's not going to give up. He's going to yep, 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 yep. You have to realize nothing to do. I'm not, I'm not going to do anything. But see, when he starts yipping, and the phantom man says, but you got to do something. 
What if this really isn't true? What if life, what if there really is a God? Or what if, you know, there really isn't just life? What if there's really not that? I mean, because that's what they was, he would tell me all the time. And now, do you really think this is really true? What if this really isn't true? What if it's just, no, no, you can't, you can't just go by that. You cannot just not do anything. Your life will be a mess. You cannot do that. <laughs> that's what it would speak to me all the time. You cannot just not do anything. You can't. You're crazy. People will think you're crazy. You can't just not do. That is just not right. That is totally not right. You cannot not do anything. Why? Exactly. If Winnie the Pooh says nothing, nothing could do every day. <laughs> But see, your mind's going to tell you no, because your mind will not let go. It will not. It does not want to. So for you to say, yeah, I'm going to let go. You just, it's not like, it's not that you have just got to determine, you know what? I just, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing it. And shut those thoughts off. And it's still going to speak, and it's still going to speak. And it's, I, I, I found the more that I have done it, it gets a little bit easier as far as used to be I would get all the way into something all the way and then like how'd I get here yeah. now it's getting a little bit better you know because now I kind of like oh wait a minute I'm not gonna I, I just I know what I've done I mean I've entertained nope 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 first of all I'm not gonna do it there's I'm just I go back to those things that geez I am the truth the way and the life Just go back to that. That's what I am. I'm life. See, the mind wants us to make it difficult. It's not. I'm life. And if I'm life, life is all in all. What's there to do? But again, but what if it's not true? What if it's not true? Shut that up. Because the mind's not going to let go. I'm going to read you a little poem. It's for everybody, but I kind of wrote the, the, um, and get a kick out of this one. Um, all right. All right, let's go. The phantom man lives in his realm of birth and death, controlled by passing time until he takes his last breath, longing to become what he thinks that he should be, constantly looking for change in order to be set free. The phantom man speaks his lies, declaring life is what is seen. But change is desperately wanted, and the slate must be wiped clean. In order to enjoy these days, the phantom calls a lifetime. He searches the realm of appearances, always looking for a ladder to climb. The mind constantly speaks, being fueled by duality. It shouts life is short from behind its mask of immortality. It's created a world that glorifies and praise, praises individuality. It's given us a book of rules to rejoice in what is morality. Silence is the weapon that can take that phantom down, destroy his web of illusion, and strip away his victory crown. <laughs> In silence, the truth is broadcast. Life is heard beyond these ears. Oneness is complete, where both fear and faith disappear. Life is in the realm that the mind cannot understand. It's never out of order, 
and it's never out of hand. Life never just happens and it has no place to go. It doesn't have a speed such as fast, medium, or slow. Life is always complete and it's always in the present. No searching through the memories, wondering where the time has went. Life is not a notion, it's the very thing we are. So pour yourself a sick, stiff one and smoke that damp cigar. <laughs> That's, you know, that is how the phantom is that he's constantly speaking. He's speaking and it's being fueled by, du by that duality. And silence is the weapon that can take that phantom down. And silence is just sitting there and being still and not listening to those thoughts and listening to that you gotta do, you gotta do constantly. It's just listening in silence. So that's all I got. Good stuff. That's it. Yeah.